Welcome back. Regional connectivity, a higher FDI limit, cheaper aviation turbine fuel and a new civil aviation policy. These are just some of the measures the Narendra Modi government has taken to try and slingshot the Indian aviation in space into higher orbit. As the government nears the completion of three years in office, CNBC TV 18's Ashpreet Sethi and Arib Sherwani find out just how successful these measures have really been. For Team Modi, infrastructure has been a focus area and civil aviation has been one of the biggest beneficiaries of this renewed attention. According to KPMG, the last four years have seen a strong surge in foreign direct investment in civil aviation. While $62 million came in as FDI between 2012 and 2014, FDI in air transport, that's including air freight, jumped to over $516 million between April 2014 and December 2016. Data shows that most of the dollar inflows have gone to the airline business. From Etihad's $300 million investment in Jet Airways to Singapore Airlines pumping $11 million into its airline JV with Tata Sons. However, the government has failed to make any serious headway in getting foreign aircraft manufacturers to make in India. As India's aviation market continues to grow, it's already uh, the third largest in the world. Uh, but we don't have to just look at the civilian side, we also have to look at the defense side. There are literally hundreds of warplanes that are required for our air force. Uh, and so when we look at what's required on the civilian side as well as the defense side, uh, it's uh, quite obvious that we will be one of the world's leaders uh, in uh, aerospace manufacturing and then planes will also be made in India. That leadership position may be a while coming. As things stand, no company makes a fully functional plane in India. The Boeing and Airbus are increasingly sourcing crucial parts from Indian manufacturers and assembling their aircraft in country. Experts say that this could soon change. If you see the kind of investment which has happened uh, historically uh, in the last uh, about 16 years, uh, it was close to a billion dollars. In comparison to that, in the last 18 months, uh, close to about 100 million dollars has come in. So I think that's a significant uh, improvement which has happened in the last 18 months and uh, much of it should be credited to the Make in India initiative. Uh, having said that, uh, I think there is a lot of further improvement which can happen. Another tough nut for the government to crack is in expanding India's contribution to the world of aircraft maintenance and repair. Airlines in India get 90% of their MRO work done overseas. To balance the scales, the government has come up with tax and duty exemptions to incentivize more MROs to set up shop and refine techniques and technology. There were certain uh, tax policies uh, and certain regulations uh, that did not make it uh, as uh, profitable and as attractive uh, as it should have been to set up uh, MRO operations in India. We've addressed those lacuna now. Experts, however, say it may not be so simple. Yeah, so the MRO uh, space part of it, uh, I'll take that first. It's it's more like a chicken and egg situation. Uh, I think little is there in, in, in the hands of government just now. Uh, I think if the critical mass is coming through, I'm expecting it to grow uh, close to about 20-25% in the next couple of years. This doesn't mean that companies are not interested in becoming a part of India's Make in India story. Many airlines we spoke to say India-based MROs will help them cut costs. Add to this the government's regional connectivity scheme that has many states lowering taxes on ATF in certain conditions and developing new airports. And the sky's the limit, no pun intended. In New Delhi with Ashpreet Sethi, Arib Sherwani.